decrepit, run down, eyesore. These words were often used to describe the old bridge that sat just outside of town. It had once been the main avenue in and out of the area, but when the highway went through, it was used less and less. By the 1990s, it was declared unsafe by the powers that be and sentenced to be demolished. Years would pass and the bridge would continue to survive. Every time its destruction came up, the money wasn't in the budget. Some groups even fought to save the bridge, claiming historical significance. These claims were laughed off by reasonable people who hadn't spent 13 years chasing ghost stories. Oh yes, there was a ghost story tied to the old structure. Not many believed it, and even fewer knew the full legend by heart. Those whose family roots went back to the founding of the town were the keepers of the tale, but that number dwindled each year as people left or died. By 2017, there were very few left who knew the truth. So that's when our story takes place. The last year anyone would associate the bridge with anything other than death. It isn't rust, after all, that stains the concrete deck that used to carry cars over the raging river below. What happened on the night of October 13th, 2017, wouldn't be forgotten as quickly as it was buried. Peter, Stacy, and Sabrina had known each other all of their lives. They had grown up in Florence, and their families were all well known with throughout the community. Peter, the former star quarterback, and Stacy had been dating on and off since their sophomore year. Sabrina and Stacy might as well have been sisters, born in the same hospital, a day apart, and living next door to each other ever since. They shared everything from clothes to secrets, and one was rarely seen without the other. After graduation, they all had plans to move away from the small town. Sabrina just needed to save up a little more using tips from her waitressing job. Peter needed a few more months to help his mom get things situated at home, and Stacy couldn't bear the thought of leaving her cat behind. After 10 years, it was safe to say they weren't going anywhere, which was just how Florence wanted things to go. As October of 2017 began, the town was preparing to celebrate its 150th birthday. Banners were hung and a whole week of festivities was planned leading up to the big day. Fall was always a popular time around the community, and anniversary years were all the more special. Every 25 years, they would have a big party with singing and dancing going on into the wee hours of the morning. The mayor would make a speech recalling the prior quarter of a century. The sheriff would chase off drunk teens trying to hook up in the dark corners. And a pig would be offered to the town spirits to secure another 25 years of prosperity. On October 11th, Stacy called Sabrina and asked her if she would be willing to go for a drive. Sabrina agreed and the two women soon found themselves cruising down a back road under a nearly full moon. They mostly discussed work and what they had been up to lately, but Sabrina could tell Stacy had more on her mind. Pulling the car into a parking area on the outskirts of town, Sabrina turned to her friend. Alright girl, something's up. I don't know what it is, but you need to spill it, she said, glaring. I honestly don't know if it's even anything to worry about. Peter's been kind of distant lately and he won't talk to me. Part of me feels like something's up. Stacy put her head in her hands as she spoke, hiding the tears as they started flowing. I know you guys have been through a lot, but I don't think you'd know what to do without each other. How many times have you both said you were done? And that never lasts more than a week. What's any different now? Maybe it's just because hormones bouncing around, but I think he's cheating. Stacy glanced up. Cheating? With who? And what do you mean, hormones? 
I'm pregnant. I haven't told anyone yet. I just found out myself last week. Stacy started sobbing harder, and Sabrina struggled to find the right words. Pregnant? That's great news, isn't it? Why haven't you told Peter? I tried, but every time I started the conversation, he says he has to make a call or go somewhere. I've only seen him a couple of times in the last week. Stacy was starting to calm down again. Look, I'm sure he's just busy with work. Maybe just break the news in a text message. That would certainly get his attention. Sabrina smiled. After a little more back and forth, the women made their way back to town with Sabrina dropping Stacy off and promising to call the next day. Stacy had actually been able to laugh at the list of ways Sabrina thought would be the best way to tell Peter about the baby, and she said that she'd consider some of them if push came to shove. But Peter would never find out about the baby. On the morning of October 12th, Stacy woke to find that Peter hadn't come home the night before. Calls to his phone went unanswered, and no one in the family seemed to know where he had gone. Calling Sabrina seemed to be just as fruitless at first, though she finally picked up, sounding like she was a bit hungover. Hey girl, what you calling this early for? You talked to Peter yet? Sabrina slurred. Peter's missing. I can't get a hold of him and no one else knows where he is. Oh shit, give me a few to get a shower and I'll be over, Sabrina said before hanging up. An hour later, the two were circling the town in Sabrina's car, searching for Peter or any information they could get. By mid-afternoon, they were among the crowds downtown, asking everyone in town when they had last seen him. The day ended with no new leads, though no one else seemed to be as worried as Stacy. Even Sabrina was starting to say that he would probably just turn up at some point. Stacy didn't sleep that night. She tried to rest, but every time she started to doze off, she was awoken by images of Peter on a bridge screaming for help. She tried to ignore them, but the visions kept getting stronger and she started to feel like she recognized the bridge. As dawn broke, she called Sabrina to come over once more, telling her about the dreams and begging her to help. Sabrina arrived with a small box of tea and got to work brewing up a drink to help Stacy calm her nerves. It was only a dream, she said. Nothing to worry about. After a few sips of tea, Stacy began to relax. It really was helping. Her eyes closed for a second and she found herself in a peaceful meadow, surrounded by flowers and the sound of birds singing. Maybe Peter really was okay and she was just overreacting to the whole situation. The drip of something cold and wet on her nose snapped her back to reality. It was dark and she was outside, laying on concrete and looking up at the stars. The full moon cast just enough light to see that something was hanging above her, dangling from some kind of beam. She tried to move, but her body wouldn't obey her wishes. She could move her eyes around enough to make out the structure of what looked like a bridge. She recognized this place. She was on the old decrepit bridge that was supposed to have been torn down years prior. But how? I wondered how long you'd be out. I was hoping to have one more chat before the ceremony. Sabrina's voice echoed all around. Still unable to move, Stacy looked up again toward the sky trying to make out what was hanging above her. Another drip landed on her face, this one hitting her top lip. The taste of iron hinting at what the liquid was. Don't worry, you'll be joining him soon. Oh, I meant to tell you I found Peter. It helped that I was the one who made him go missing in the first place. You were right, you see. He was cheating on you. He was going to leave you for good but that wasn't necessary. She walked onto the bridge, finally showing up in Stacy's field of view. Whatever had paralyzed her was starting to wear off, and Stacy found she could now turn her head ever so slightly. Gazing at Sabrina, 
Stacy was able to just barely speak using all of her strength. Why? Uh, what are you doing? She groaned. Well, you know that story our parents told us when we were kids? Uh, about this bridge and how our ancestors wiped out all those natives who were trying to steal our land? Turns out it was all true. But there was a curse laid on our families. Basically, we can't leave until the last descendant of the last family has a baby. It's a whole thing, and I don't want to bore you with the details, but you aren't the only one who's pregnant. I know it's a lot to take in, but I really want to get out of this town, and this is the only way. But I've got to do it right at 10 p.m. for some reason. Curses never really make that much sense, but I'm not going to argue with a century-old book. She was looking down over the edge of the bridge now, her voice sounding more jagged as she spoke. Stacy was still not able to move more than her head, and she was beginning to feel sleep trying to take over again. Sabrina had to be out of her mind. None of them had ever taken the old story seriously. Even their parents had only shared the tale as a ghost story around the campfire. No one actually believed it, though. As she struggled to fully realize what was happening, she saw Sabrina glance down at her phone before grabbing the handle of something sitting next to her and walking over. Despite what I have to do, just know that I still love you and I really wish there was another way, Sabrina said, lifting the axe above her head. Closing her eyes, Stacy mentally braced for the pain that was about to come, wishing she could scream out or move. But instead of an axe striking its target, the sound of a gun firing filled the air. Three more shots rang out, followed by a loud thud. Then, Stacy passed out again. The next time she woke, she was greeted by bright lights and the sound of beeping. She opened her eyes to find herself in a hospital bed, her parents sitting next to her. The feeling in her body had returned, and she was able to move her hand enough to touch her mother's hand as it rested on the bed. A flurry of activity followed, with doctors and nurses coming in to ask how she was doing and a feeding tube being removed from her mouth. In the coming days, a detective would come by to get her statement and help her better understand what she had been through. Sabrina had been shot and killed on the bridge just seconds before she could kill Stacy. Peter had been sleeping with both women, and both had become pregnant around the same time. It all seemed so surreal. Her parents confirmed the part of the legend that Sabrina had been talking about, emphasizing that it was only a legend. The baby, it turned out, was unharmed through the whole ordeal, and a few months later, Stacy found herself back in the hospital with a baby girl in her arms. The feeling of being a mother was overwhelming, but there was another feeling that crept up as well. For the first time in her life, Stacy felt like a weight had been lifted off of her. She felt like she could go anywhere she wanted. She'd never been outside of Florence, but that was about to change. A few weeks later, she sat on a bus with her baby in her arms as they crossed the county line together. In the distance, she could see the outline of a decrepit, run-down, eyesore of a bridge with a dark stain that should never be mistaken for rust. <laughs>